Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to do a mashed potato book video. So first, let me explain what a mashed potato book is. I did have a bookmark that had this whole cute little comic strip kind of thing about it, but I lost it. I don't know where it is. But I can give you the gist. So there's this podcast called Books Unbound that's hosted by Ariel and Raylene. And they created this concept of a mashed potato book. And so what it essentially is, is a book that you think you're going to love so much that you're waiting for the quote unquote right time to read it that you never end up actually picking it up. Just like how, you know, Thanksgiving dinner, you save the mashed potatoes for last because they're the best. But then at that point, they're kind of cold. They're not in their peak state, you know. So I was inspired to do this one because I have quite a few mashed potato books. I recently just went through my entire library and decided to sell, I want to say, maybe half of it. Some of them were books that I had talked about in my last video that I was going to donate and then I also went through all of my unread books and decided they were there were just some books that I was never going to read so trying to find a better home for them I'll also link the bookstore that I'm using to sell my books so if you want any of them look there the third thing that inspired me to make this video was a video by Lena Norms where she went through her library and picked her top 10. I'm doing six. Yeah, I'm doing six. She picked her 10 books that have been on her bookshelf forever that she's been wanting to read and it was kind of a challenge for herself to read them by the end of the year. So I decided to go with six books that I want to read by the end of the year that I've been meaning to get to but haven't picked up yet. So let's get started. So the first book in my list is I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings by Maya Angelou. So this is one of those books that's quoted everywhere. And every time I hear a quote, I get very excited about it. I write it down somewhere. I take a screenshot of it. And I've had this book for about six months. I'm pretty sure I found it at a thrift store in great condition. And I just haven't picked it up. But I feel like I like the quotes so much that the book is going to be a hit. Next, we have 84 Charing Cross Road by Helen Humph. I believe is how you pronounce your last name. This was one of the first books that I saw in a recommendation video when I first started watching booktube. It's about this New York and London bookstore that are kind of pen pals in a sense. And it was published in 1970, so it's an older book, but I feel like this is the peak cozy vibes. You have a bookstore in New York, you have a bookstore in London, and it's the communication between the two. Very excited. It's also so short, less than 100 pages. So this, this should be easy, and I don't know why I haven't read it. Not only is this a short book, but the format is of letters. So there's like the letterhead, from which bookstore the letter is coming from, the day, all that stuff. So very excited for that. The next book on the list I actually mentioned in my last video when talking about The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo and Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Taylor, Taylor Jenkins Reid. And this one is Daisy Jones and the Six. I have always enjoyed Taylor Jenkins Reid's writing. And this book I first started on audiobook that I got from the library was not a fan. I returned it probably the second day that I started it. I was just having a hard time getting into the story, but I feel like I'm going to love the story, so I got it in paperback to actually sit down and read. 
and it's been on my shelf for too long for how much I talk about it. So the next book on my list is The Book of Two Ways by Jodi Picoult. Not by my own choice. Jodi Picoult has been in my life for the majority of my life. My older sister is the unofficial, uh, what would you call it? Leader? Captain? President of the Jodi Picoult book club fan club any club that involves her she has all of her books even when she didn't have some of them she was looking for them and me and my other sisters when we saw them in the thrift store we would get them for her also my mother-in-law gave me this book because she had read it and she said it was so good and the book that recently got me out of my reading slump was Wish You Were Here by Jodi Picoult and my sister said that this is this one is just as good. So all I know about this book is there's something about a death doula. That's literally all I know, which is already intriguing. So I'm excited to get through that one. My fifth book on my mashed potato list is The People in the Trees by Hanya. Oh, there's a butterfly. Oh, a little ladybug. The fifth book on my list is The People in the Trees by Hanya Yanagihara. She wrote the infamous A Little Life that I read last year that was a big challenge for me because I felt as though I was going to love the book, but it was a big book. I think it was over 400 pages. And I was so impressed, one, that I made it through that book. And also the writing style I really really enjoyed so I got this one this is about a young do doctor that goes to a remote island learns things from the islanders and then when he comes back he realizes that there's some problem with what he learned from them both for himself and for the islanders so I I'm not as intrigued by the story, but I feel like I really like their writing, that that's what's pulling me to read it. And also, this is still a pretty long book. This is a this is still over 400 pages, so it's still going to be a challenge, and I think I really will enjoy it, if not for the story, for the writing itself. And the last book of my mashed potato pile is Tomorrow There Will Be Apricots by Jessica Sofer. This is a book, one, I think is absolutely gorgeous. I love whatever this pattern is. I think it's beautiful. I found this book randomly in a thrift store. I want to say like two years ago. It has been on my bookshelf forever and I always forget about it. And when I was going through my library the other day, I read the blurb and I was like, every time I read this blurb, I get so excited. I can't wait to read this book and I forget about it. So I decided that this one had to be in the list. I originally was going to do five. And then once I found this book, I knew I had to add another one to my list. Let me just read it for you. This is a story about accepting the people we love the people we have to love, and the people we choose to love, the families we're given and the families we make. It's the story of two women adrift in New York, a widow and an almost orphan, each searching for someone else, for someone she's lost. And the story of how, even in moments of grief and darkness, there are joys waiting nearby. Like... My favorite kind of books are about familial relationships, navigating them. I love when women are the main character, and this is about two women that are navigating their own reality of that. So this one I'm really, really excited to read. I'm not sure what I want for the order of these books. Like, do I start with something short that I feel accomplished or do I get one of 
the bigger books out of the way. Let's see. Let me think about this. Okay. I think this is going to be my order of reading. So the challenge to myself is that I'm going to finish these books by the end of the year. I'm obviously going to read other books in that time, but these are the main books that I'm promising and committing to myself that I will get through. So first I'll do Daisy Joan and the Six, I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings, 84 Charing Cross Road, The People in the Trees, The Book of Two Ways, and tomorrow there will be apricots. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you have those books that have been sitting on your shelf and collecting dust and you have been feeling like you're not picking them up because you think you'll love them, I encourage you pick them up, share below what books those are in your library. I'll also have links down below to Books Unbound, which the concept of mashed potato books came from, Lena's video that inspired this video, my bookstore where I'm selling books for my library, as well as my story graph if you want to pick, keep up with my reading and what books I'm in, what books I'm going through. I just want to thank you so much for watching this video. If you like it, share it. If not, I'm glad you stuck around to the end. Okay, talk to you guys later.